track site where the quarry is. And one of the dinosaur tracks that I found 13 years ago is right here. Three thumb lengths in length. Same with this one. Now, over some of that, it looks like there might be another one right here. And possibly, no, I'm not sure about that. There seems to be one here, too. They're very faint. And of course, this is desert varnish here. This is a rock that got split away when they were working on the quarry. There's those tracks right below. level up over here. Here uh, find it. Okay. Pile of rocks and here is the trackway. Small bipedal dinosaur trackway. It's here. There's one. See the three toes. And the next one. And the next is right here. And there's one here. There's one here. See the toes. See the track here. Toes, about the about an inch. And another. It's still the infilling material from the top strata is still in it. Now this trackway continues, but somebody has removed a rock right here. And it continues on the other side. Now see how this track is broken and split here, part of it is here, and this is slid this way. And it continues 
but it's very faint. Now back here, there are some very faint tracks just over from these, which include this one here. And also one here. You can even see the you can see the claws. One, two, three, four looks like. Now I put a little bit of water on them to enhance them. There, uh, let's see, the stride is about one, two, three inches. One, two, this is the size of the dinosaurs that made those tracks I didn't know a T-Rex could make a sound like that. This is about the size of the dinosaur that made those small dinosaur tracks. This is a Compsognathus from uh, Germany, same place they found the Archaeopteryx. You see the skull here, and the eye, or this is the eye here. This is the nose, and this is a finastra. And then you can see the neck is bent back over his back, and his tail. And the feet. And here is his arms. Across the hill from those dinosaur tracks over there in the quarry, there's another road that comes up here, way over there, and on this other hill are more of these dinosaur tracks. Here's the quarry, here's the mountains. is a large dinosaur track. I believe this appears to be the up push. This is the central toe. And it's probably, it's pretty large. Now, when I was here before, this tilted rock went back in, but you see it's covered over, and of course they put rocks on it, so you don't recognize it. But there's more than one track layer here. Over here is another layer that's on top of that layer, and these are tilted on top of each other. And here are more tracks. Now these are not great dinosaur tracks and that's no doubt the reason why they didn't remove them. There was one here. 
See, I'll show you here. This one here. And one there. And over there. Tilts on back into the rock, there may be more. In fact, when I was here, I think it was there was more. It was more open. There weren't so many rocks on top of it. And it goes back down at an angle. It appears that this is the heel. And this is the main toe with three tridactyl toes. Now this one looks like the heel here facing that way. Well this one's facing this way. These are kind of random prints. And uh, this seems to be the up push here. And this one here isn't very clear. Well, it could be connected to that one. Let's see. This seems to be an up push in here. material around here is volcanic. In fact, this is on top of uh, uh, volcanic. And also mixed in with the volcanic are some pieces of limestone. Very similar to the Bird Spring limestone that we looked at that's found in uh, over in Baker. Now there's the dinosaur tracks right over there and right down here is a huge piece of limestone. Notice how the acid rain has eaten into it and that looks very similar to what you see in uh, Baker. Now here are some of the rocks there. This this is not the ones that have the fossils in them. These are volcanic. This is volcanic rock. They're different colors. Some of them are even conglomerate. And this one is a reddish one. And here Here's another one. And this one is an olivine. Beautiful green. Now you'll notice all of these rocks have this uh, caliche on them. Just about every fossil site has rocks with this caliche on the outside here. Now this formed from uh, rain, which has uh, acid rain, which has uh, taken the uh, limestone rocks and kind of melted them, and then they uh, redeposit. And also it's from uh, uh, lake beds. Uh, Pleistocene lakes that were left behind after the flood and they left uh, very highly mineral mineralized water with a lot of lime in it and it formed this caliche on the rocks.